Welcome, everybody, to the PhDJ Podcast. My name is Mike. Yes, sir. Indeed, this is Joe Bunn back again. Hey, Joe. Hello, How are sir. you? I'm good. I just rear-ended a lady on the way to uh, record the podcast. I know. I don't know if you wanted to talk about it on air or not. But, Why not? Uh, so... I, I, we were supposed to record at 8 a.m. I, I texted Joe, I'm on, and he goes, I'm going to need, when you said you rented somebody, I figured we're going to have to reschedule. No, I, I, I did the thing. Minutes. Yeah, I did the thing where I'm like, listen, uh, what's your cell number? And I just texted her a picture of my ID, and then I wrote, you know, I'll pay for your bumper in cash because I know my deductible. I mean, it was barely, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just, yeah, like, it was one of those deals. The, the, yeah. the str- Nobody was hurt. Actually. No, no. And I, I was like, if we call the police and get in all that, we're going to be here till noon. Now it's all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, said, right. I said, I gave her the late, the guy that I know that fixes dents, uh, and I gave her my ID, and I said, I'll just go pay him cash, just get him to fix it. And, all right. As we long could. as everyone was okay, hey, we just went on our merry and way. You weren't. You claim you weren't looking at your phone. Nope. I was looking at Is a, that at your a story. Yeah, and you're I promise. To it? I was not. I was looking right. at a broken piece of my scone that fell on the floor. You were eating. I was you eating. Were eating. Yep. So uh, it it fell under the heading of distracted driving. Correct. So it's a good lesson for everybody. No matter what, phone, <laughs> eating, whatever. Scone, no phone, distracted driving. All that yeah. shit. Scone, phone. Um, so I have a topic, but mm-hmm. before we get to it, a couple mm-hmm. small things. How, mm-hmm. in, in, in a few minutes, how was New York? Uh, I would give New York, this New York trip, a 7.8 out of 10. You had nice weather. I had incredible weather. I did all, this, all the uh, sightseeing things that I think uh, people are supposed to do. Uh, okay. The kids were well-behaved. Um, Good. I the bathroom nobody situation. Got nobody got mugged. The bathroom situation is definitely a situation. Um, Meaning what? When you're strolling around, it's hard to find a, a bathroom. Correct. But then yeah. I kind of dialed in from. God, isn't there a Starbucks on like every corner? Can't you just was, duck in? It and... was 14 deep at the Starbucks that we went to in this particular. Uh, I don't know if it was at the yeah. foot of a, a bus station or a subway station, you know, where everybody kind of emptied into that one. Even across the street at Dunkin' Donuts, it was seven deep. And then in the middle of the seven right. deep, they started doing a cleaning session. Holy shit, I got to I gotta close that blind. I was going to say, if you anyone is watching, is it, if anyone's... <laughs> I look like a ghost. Hold on. There you are. You're back. No, you're not. You're back? I'm back, yeah. I got told, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got told I had a poor connection, so I switched to audio only. So, um, for the video purposes of this, they might just see my face. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great, but oh, I definitely cannot right. see you anymore. So, yeah, all right. I'm, I'm not that attractive. Anyway, so, um, but then all the, you know, once I made that post on Instagram stories, all the DJs were like, bro, the, the key is you just walk in a hotel and act like you're staying there, and they have the prime bathrooms by the ballrooms. And I was That's like, a good well, one. there yeah. you go. Uh, yeah. King Kong on Broadway is a 10 out of 10. 10. Is uh, it? Uh, dude, I'm telling you, it is, Mike, it is the coolest. See, I wouldn't have given it a time. I told I, you, we saw it. Kelly and I, I saw you know, it. I took I, okay, parents. yes. Musically, uh, uh, no, it's not a 10. But uh, as far as King Kong, the, you know, there's yes. eight, nine that people working there. coming to life Bro. was incredible, yeah. I looked I, over at my I kids, told- and Davis's jaw was like on the floor. He just was like, yeah. this is not happening. Well, that's uh, what I said to you last week. Yeah. I knew the kids would love it. I love. absolutely knew the kids would love it. Um, yeah, so um, that, that's great. So, I, I wouldn't have given it a 10 yep. out of 10, but that's awesome. Hey, yeah. Rob Ferre, shout out, because he's the Broadway king, and he recommended that for the whole family. And um, we did all the sneaker things. Check the thing off my bucket list where you go to this Nike lab and sit with a guy for two hours. So me and the boys sat there for hours with – Every fabric Nike has, every lace, every color sole, every thing, and designed an Air Max for two and a half hours, and it was wow heaven. So I didn't show anybody wow. the rendering, and I'm just gonna do a video when it comes out, uh, when it comes from wherever they make them in China in two months. It's super cool. That's cool because it has. That's cool. You know the colors have meaning to us the the different fabrics that we picked are things that we like off the shoes that you know that we each like and it, right. like we all got along nobody was arguing over it you know it was, <laughs> obviously it was on my bucket list did, did easily go to that she did was the more of like a she photographer just... she was more like oh, a okay. scribe if you will right. for that event i thought maybe she went to like a spa during that i i something. offered mike i'll be honest um there were several high-end places in that area i offered and she declined so 
Anyway, okay. she, she, cool. she hung she out. She still wanted to be with him. Yeah. Very yeah. cold. Very cold. Great time. Uh, so that's great. I'm glad you enjoyed New York did, and, and didn't have a horrible experience because it's a it's a great town. It is, man. So I just read something um, <laughs> that I thought I'd share with the listeners. I thought it was really good. You and I talk about cockiness often and the fine line between confidence and cockiness. Aaron Rodgers, first of all, can you believe he was drafted 14 years ago? No, it doesn't seem that long. Isn't that amazing? 14 years. And apparently, I never knew this story, but he grew up uh, just outside of San Francisco and he grew up a 49er fan. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, so he was hoping they would pick him going into the draft, but obviously mm-hmm. they didn't. They picked uh, Alex Smith uh, for as. Which was a bad pick. Alex no, no, Smith was pretty yeah, good for them. Um, but so he fell to the Packers. And right after he so literally right after he was drafted, mm-hmm. they asked him, are you disappointed the 49ers didn't pick you? And he said, quote, not as disappointed as the 49ers will be that they didn't oh, draft me. Oh, shit. <laughs> How great is that? Dude, and you know no. what? He backed it up. I mean, it's one thing to say something like that right after a draft, but then 14 years later, and you know, and again, and Alex Smith wasn't a bust exactly. No, no, he's not a bum. But yeah. if, you knew, if you knew then what you know now, you would have taken Aaron Rodgers. I love no that. doubt. That's a great line. Yeah. That's a great yeah. line. Isn't that great? I, I that um, great? the, the, um, I love Aaron Rodgers. I saw him on 60 Minutes one time, and his biggest um, Achilles heel, if you will, is when people meet him and say, you're not as big as I thought you were. And, man, somebody – I don't know how it came up in this interview. He was at a meet and greet, and somebody came in the – you know, let's say this was a day before the game or something, some charity golf thing, and a guy said it, man, and his whole attitude changed. His 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 facial expression. I can see that. That's not ex- that's not exactly it's a, a dick thing to, to say, somebody. but I think why a lot you, of people must. Say yeah. I, I think he's small. Yeah. You know, for, or or he's small in NFL standards. Put it that way. Right. But it doesn't right. matter. I mean, right. he's he's, yes. he's Six Aaron Rodgers. Two is short for right, a quarterback. Right. You're not. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. You look at Cam Newton. The guy's literally bigger than anybody on the team. I mean. Right. Right. Uh, the one the one story yeah. I have like that, Mike. Uh, I love this 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 story. It's one of those things you'll never forget. I was reading Rolling Stone. This was right when Matchbox Twenty started to get big, and every. Everybody was Rob Thomas, Rob Thomas, Rob Thomas. And they asked the guitar player, you know, how do you feel, you know, being a Matchbox 20 and nobody really knows who you are? And he goes, yeah, I'm going to go jump off my wallet and commit suicide. <laughs> I mean, because they were line. just raking yeah. it. In. You know, yeah. that that record sold 100 million copies or whatever, the first right. one. And right. then they went on and on and on. He's still in well, the and, and good for him because some people, that would affect them. Yeah. Some people would, would be pissed at that yep. even if they had all the yep. money in the world. They still want the credit. So yep. good for him. I love that story. Yeah, by the way, I know you never go back and listen to our podcast. <laughs> but we – so last week we had an interesting comment. Mm-hmm. Um, at last week I did the ads differently. We've been running three ads in our podcast, yeah. and uh, usually what I do is I put one in, and then I take a second commercial break later, and we and I put two ads in. Okay. Last week I put I just separated I, I three quick breaks, right? Three back to back. But so no, no, no. One and then ten minutes later another oh, okay, one, and okay. then ten minutes later another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so somebody commented last week, Lucas London, who I don't think I know. I'm not sure if I know Lucas London, but, and I don't even understand this comment. He said, y'all going a little hands ham sandwich with the ads. Don't you think every 30 seconds? So, I mean, obviously it's not every 30 seconds. That's an exaggeration, but do you know what that means? Y'all going a little ham sandwich? A uh, ham means hard as a m- mother effer. So I think he just likes, like that's his slang. So if somebody says, man, oh. you, you're going ham, like that means you're going like wild. So it means I've we've never been, heard that term yeah. before. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lucas, it's, it really is the same. It's 90 seconds of ads in a 30 minute <laughs> in a uh, podcast that, right. that Joe and I don't make any money to do. So that's our Zero only way of kind of point. monetizing it. Point Zero. Zero. So sorry, Lucas, if 90 <laughs> seconds of ads and, uh, you know, but I just thank you for explaining that. I didn't know what y'all ham. do in ham sandwich. Yeah, so ham. so w- w- what would you recommend one commercial break with all three? I thought sprinkling them in was a little bit better, but maybe we should just take a halftime break and put all three. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Try that. I mean, I feel like the ones that I've listened to in the past, which is pretty rare, <laughs> it always seems like they have kind of a they, – they're obviously much bigger and have many more ads and usually are on air much longer. But I feel like they usually have a longer gap. You know oh, I mean? you're talking about other people's Yeah, like a Dax Shepard. You know, I've listened to his podcast a couple times. Yeah, um, Dax Shepard probably. 
he has a few like national yeah. sponsors. Oh, major. Two, major. two of the three ads, by the way, are Joe and I <laughs> pitching our own stuff because we're, we're trying to monetize this effort. Anyway, so to the topic at hand this week, we had a we had a great post yeah. on our graduate page uh, about closing. Yeah. And I, I, I commented. And by the way, when when I say graduate page, I mean, when Joe and I do the workshop, uh, all the graduates are invited into right. a private Facebook group, which I think is fantastic. And, you know, ongoing conversations and, and, you know, we continue to share and learn from each other and things like that. And it's a, and it's one of those rare Facebook groups where it's non, you know, there's no flaming, there's no, it's not DJ idea sharing is what I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? Um, and so, and people can be brutally honest in there. And so, uh, and I, I told this gentleman, I wouldn't share his name, but, mm-hmm. uh, this, uh, one of our graduates said, I've always struggled with closing a sale. If someone ever hesitate, I typically say something like, okay, no worries. Take some time to think about it. Let me know when you're ready. Mm-hmm. Half of the time I don't hear back. And then he said yesterday he had a great meeting with a potential client for a wedding. Mm-hmm. She seemed excited about what we offer, but at the end of our discussion, she told me she needs to think about it uh, and still has another company to meet on Friday. I resisted my temptation to give up and was completely honest. And I said, you seem really excited about what we offer and our prices fit your budget. I think we'd be perfect fit for you, which is a great line. I think Mm -hmm. all that what's holding you back from signing a contract right now with us. She hesitated and said she didn't know, but it's always a hard decision to make. Mm -hmm. She still left the office without signing a contract. But two hours later, I received an email from her. You're absolutely right. You're perfect for us. And we'd love to move forward. So mm-hmm. I thought this was a good topic. And I even asked him, I said, you know, I'd like to make this the topic of this mm-hmm. week's uh, podcast. Can we do that. He said, yes, of course. So you tell me, Joe, mm-hmm. what, if you get that typical resistance, I want to think about it, blah, blah, blah. I have another company to meet with. What is your are, are you rolling up your sleeves and playing salesperson and trying mm-hmm. to close at that point? Or are you just letting them walk out the door? I mean, as much as probably people on here want to hear the magic elixir or, you know, some sales wizardry that I'm getting ready to pull out, they they would walk out the door. Um, Are they still 95 percent coming back? Yes. Um, Okay. I think, Mike, that most. Listen, if that's your experience, if 95 percent closed, then I, I think you're probably handling things the right way. Right. I think that. I, I know that my presentation, you know, with, we do the whole keynote presentation. We, you know, talk to them about what they're looking for. We show them the planners. We, you know, show them all the things that we offer. They're literally set up in here. The, the photo booth is right there. The up lights are set up around the room. Like by the time we've gone through our presentation, let's say in the whole thing, from the minute they walk in to the minute they walk out is around 45 minutes. And again, in a 500 square foot office with the the wall behind me not even going all the way to the top i can hear exactly how the guys are doing it as well i feel mm-hmm. like we've delivered all the information that we can now i feel like when people leave here there are a couple of reasons without signing there are a couple of reasons one they're alone so the bride just came alone or the groom just came alone um or two they are not in essence, the decision maker, um, you know, maybe they right. came maybe in Maybe their parents are Correct. paying for it or. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So they might've come in with that base package, you know, 1395 in their head. And that was maybe their budget that their parents had allotted. But then they realized, wait, we didn't, we didn't factor in ceremony audio or the up lights sure do look good at that ballroom. Like now they're at 2000, 2600, you know, something like that. They kind of have to go back to the, the funder. Right. So, I feel like it's usually a money based thing or they do say, you know, we're meeting with somebody else and sometimes I'll ask, well, tell me who else. And of course I never, and, and, and I've, I've said this before on the podcast podcast, never, ever, ever say anything negative about your competition. Right. You, you're never going to bash that it's, guy because it's yeah. not going to make you look good no nope. matter what. It's not a yeah. win. Uh, and I'll say, Oh, yeah. I know those guys, they do a good job. The only time I ever say anything towards, negativity is if i as a as a dj in the south uh or or the 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 eastern part of north carolina for the past 40 years um i say i don't know that guy and that concerns me that's the only thing i've ever said and and Mm -hmm. at that point they they're usually like oh okay maybe maybe we'll skip that meeting but 
I, that's all I would ever say in a negative fashion. I just don't know that guy, and that worries me a little bit because I've been DJing between you know the beach and the mountains, really the whole state of North Carolina since I was six, thirteen, whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, there is no hard close. I mean, a lot of the uh, the way my guys close, they'll say, "So does everything sound good? Can I have Joe send you a contract?" Is usually what right. our kind of closing line is, and I'll, I'm the same way. I'm like. You know, what do you guys think? Um, and then we do. Um, so, Mike, I know your policy is a little bit, excuse me, different. We do give a week from today. So, in other words, if I meet a bride today, you know, at 10 o'clock after we record this, uh, I would give her until next Wednesday at 10 o'clock to make that decision. And and, I, and I'm pretty frank about it. Like, I'm, I don't say, listen, your date effectively goes null and void, but, you know, please let us know within that, that time period time frame and again 95 percent of the people are coming back right it's very right. rare somebody so, comes here and doesn't book i guess is what i'm trying so to you say. just said a lot and i want to unpack a few sure. things first of all um can joe send you a contract is a i think a great closing line um i'm always very maybe maybe too sensitive about uh verbiage and specific words i think the word agreement mm-hmm. as opposed to like contract that. is is nicer and yeah. softer it says basically the same thing but most people would rather have an agreement than a contract because mm-hmm. it sounds you know much more committal committing so so um, that's the only thing I would change about that. But I, I do, do like, like that. that line. And that's and that's an advantage of having your DJs sell mm-hmm. because, you know, basically they're just asking for, you know, for you as opposed to you asking. But I, I think that that's a great, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with just asking that question. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a client wants to book on the spot. Um But you, you know, we sometimes don't even give them the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how does everything look? Would you like to reserve everything today? Would you like to sign an agreement? Would you like to see an agreement? Mm -hmm. Sometimes a a client just wants to read over the small print before they, 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 you know, they reserve things. So I think those are all kind of soft ways of closing without, you know, are we going to lock it in today? That type of thing. But, but at least they give the client the, the chance to, um, to let them know when you talk about upgrades, uh, blowing up the price, mm-hmm. I'm also very sensitive to that. Mm-hmm. And so if I start sensing that in a sales appointment, the main thing I'll say is, look, the most important thing is that you reserve the talent God, that you I do want. The same thing. So, man. Go ahead. So let's say they're looking at Tom Monaco. I'll yeah. say, forget about all the upgrades. Yes. Let's get Tom Monaco reserved yes, for you. Yes, yes, yes. And then, and then you can, you know, you can wait till we get closer you know, to decide whether you want to add the TV screens or the dancing on the clouds or any of those other things. Um, because I, I, I'm, I feel the same way about photo and video. You know, we offer all three services and sometimes sure. clients will come in looking for a DJ. Yep. And then so they're expecting to pay like two thousand. And then they realize we offer all three services. Now they're looking at all three. And, and all of a sudden we're handing them an eight thousand dollar quote. And and so I I can see it. I'm like, okay, well, I get that. You came in thinking you're going to book a DJ. And now so we say, look, let's take everything else off the table. Let's go back to the basics. Did did you like Jay Thompson? Do you want to book him tonight? Do you want to reserve him tonight? Mm -hmm. And then we can always reserve photo and video, you know, as you. So sometimes it's great to do all three in one. But sometimes I can see that that's just blowing them out of the water now with price. So I I couldn't. uh, I think that's with that, Mike. I mean, I think if you. If, if there's, you know, price hesitation or they do get to this kind of last part of the presentation and you kind of write out this this bill for what they want and they, they see the sticker shock, then reel yourself back a little bit and say, listen, all we really this is exactly the line I say. I say all we really want to do is to lock in a DJ for four or five hours for you guys that night. Don't worry about any of this other stuff. All I do all day long is add on things to people's contract of, of shows that are coming up in the very near future where people had a little extra money in the budget and they added a photo booth or they decided they wanted to extend another hour. I do that all the time. What you want to do right. is get the DJ that you want as soon as you can. And then you can check that off your to-do list. Anything else you can yeah, add Yeah, because later. everything else, everything else is just, it's a commodity. Totally. I mean, we, you know, we, 
I, we so rarely book up our, our uplighting or our right. dancing on it. We, we're so rarely booked out of that stuff. So mm-hmm. it's not worth it. And, and uplighting is not like a specific talent. If mm-hmm. they came in and looked at one of our specific DJs or in your case, met with that specific mm-hmm. DJ then, and like that guy, then that's the, that's the, the urgency. Let's get him reserved. So you don't lose him on the day. So I think that's a, a good strategy to, to, uh, to work around. And then what you, what you just said about the seven day hold, I'm mm-hmm. not, I don't disagree with that we do that often but that to me is the commitment from the client's point of view we're not just going to do that for any client if they're like yeah we're you know we're really just kind of looking around then we just go great just want to remind you we do a lot of showcasing Mm -hmm. we book a lot of events so when you call back we, you know, this DJ may or may not be open, but if they, if they do give us a line, like, yeah, we're going to go see another DJ company on Monday, then we'll say, look, then great. If you like Jay, why don't we put him on hold for you until Tuesday? So the day after you meet with this other DJ company, and sometimes that'll be four days away. Sometimes it'll be 11 days away, but we base it on that. When is that other appointment that you've told us about? We'll give you 24 hours after that appointment, and that'll be your opportunity to decide. So this this way, they they do have that peace of mind to know that that Randy, in your case, is being held for them. Mm-hmm. But it's not, you know, they don't have two weeks after that appointment. They have, in our case, we give them 24 hours mm. because I want that DJ to be freed up if they're not ready to commit at that point. I will um, point out one more uh, advantage of having your DJ sell guys or, you know, uh, is that they don't have to be master salesmen because you've kind of given them this, this keynote or PowerPoint to follow along. But the other beauty of it is that if it gets into any sort of negotiation about price, they can simply say that's a Joe decision. So in other words, you know, somebody starts trying to talk them down or can you do, you know, throw this in or X percentage off this or so-and-so company is willing to do it for X, Y, and Z. They say, hey, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm a DJ. I I work here. I'm not at liberty to, you know, negotiate these prices. Let me get back to you after I talk to Joe. So then one, they've got, it, it gives them gives us as a company a a little bit of stall time and two then i can kind of figure out look at the calendar you know once the dj reaches out hey joe this person get married on may 10th blah 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 like i can look at okay well how busy are we what's the probability this guy is still going to get booked um do we have you know uh, do they want these add-ons you know is it worth doing what is the margin here so they don't have to sit there and all of a sudden become this master negotiator uh, on behalf of the company, they can really just stall, if you will. So right. it works out right. for us sometimes. I mean, I know your guys have been with you so long, Mike, that they're, you know, they, they know the wiggle room uh, factor. Well, Dominic and Chris do. And that's, and that's the saying. difference. I mean, I don't, you know, when, when Jay Thompson, when we're trying to sell Jay Thompson, right. you know, every once in a while, the client wants to talk to him and we'll bring him in and say, yeah. look, we'll arrange a phone call, that type of thing. Or, or we have a bridal show coming up. Why don't you meet him there? Mm-hmm. But at that point, it rarely gets into the pricing stuff because they understand, look, I'm, I'm dealing with a salesperson, meaning Dominic, Chris or me, mm-hmm. and I'm just now consulting with the talent. I'm not a big fan of the delay on that. You know, Hey, I'll have to have Joe get back back to you. But, but I don't think there's any better workaround because you don't want to deputize all your, Correct. To all your salespeople to say, here's what we can discount. Here's where we can. It's too much decision making at that point. So I get that that's your best bet is mm-hmm. just to have them say, look, I'm going to have to have Joe give me an answer on that. And, and again, Mike, I mean, uh, a, a lot of the policy, I mean, the policy pretty much company wide is really, there's no wiggle room, but Going into some of the meetings, like if I send a what I call a hot lead to a DJ, I'll say in the, you know, it'll say Susie Smith, May 10th, blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll write in the notes like this is a Sunday wedding in August. Like that is super rare. You know, we may have, you know, we may be able to do something on this. Like if they ask, you know, or yeah, even I, I know that there are some people that don't discount for anything. Right, no, Their point yeah. is I put the same effort in, but I've never had that philosophy. To me, it's yeah. all about the number of leads I'm going to get on a yeah. day. Yeah. And, and if you've been doing, if you've been in this business for any al- amount of time in your market, cause it is, you know, it changes by market, then you should know that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we can tell, and again, this goes back to Dominic and Chris and selling with, with me for so long. They know, 
just from entering a lead. You know, I just entered a lead before we went on the phone for a Saturday in May of next year. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a busy date. That person has no, we've got no flexibility on that date because I'm going to book out at, at pretty much full price. But if it was a Sunday in March, then yeah, I, I, we already, we already discount up front on a date like that. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's like, look, we really want to book you, but that up lighting at 650, is there anything you can do? Yeah, we probably will. Cause I know I'm going to have five up lighting sitting in a warehouse on that day. So why not send one out at a little bit of a discounted price? So, uh, I'm, I've always been very keen to, I'll discount on, on certain days when it's, when it's in my best interest. Yep. Same here. Same here. I mean, hotels do it all the time. You can stay in a hotel for one hundred and fifty dollars a night, and then that same room will be four fifty uh, on a different night. Why is that? Is a, is the hotel room worth three times more? Well, it's all about supply and demand at that point. It's all about how many, you know, how many people are going to be staying in that hotel. Do they need the discount? Do they can they charge full rate? Um, so I, I I have adopted the same philosophy with Elite. Good model. Good model, sir. Yeah, very good. Good. So I think this was good, right? Yeah, it's good. Really good. I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, always keep listening. Always keep uh, commenting when we post these things on Facebook. Let us know what you want to hear about, and and we will try and get to that. Let us know a... if we ham sandwich the ads, please. <laughs> we went ham sandwich, bro. Yeah, um, full ham sandwich. I'm fully expecting for this lady to call me any minute and say that I owe her two thousand dollars for a little dinner in her sure. bumper. But Rational. anyway. Good way to start the day. At least we got a good podcast under our belts. Thank you guys for listening. Mike, always a pleasure talking to you, my friend. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Oh, I'll see you all at Midwest DJs Live, whoever's going. Peace and love. I'm I'm disappointed I'm missing out. I was about to say. Is that next week? No, I'm leaving Sunday. Is that next week? No, it's Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So we have to to figure out the reschedule for next week. No, I'll be back. I'll be back Wednesday. You'll be back by Wednesday. Yeah, I'm coming back late Tuesday night. Yeah, I'm coming back at midnight. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, have a great time. Please sell, say hello to everybody for me at Midwest Teachers Live. I had a great time last year, and, yeah. and hopefully I'll be back in the future. It's a great show. Awesome. All right, brother. Take care, everybody. Later.